All right, I want to show you guys how to create a brush, a pattern brush in Illustrator and a few little tips along the way. Um, and I want to create a zipper. So I've got some pieces here. And the way we create a pattern brush in Illustrator, and you guys can use, don't think that if you hear the term brush that it's used for artwork necessarily. I mean, I use pattern brushes for all sorts of things, um, for, you know, picket fences, for pieces on, you know, a car, or, you know, all sorts of different things. So to create a pattern brush, what we need to do is we need to create pieces for the brush, okay? And each of these pieces is going to be a part of the brush. So you guys, this is actually a line. This is just a path with the brush applied I created. So if you guys see, I'm, I'm going to take my pencil tool here and draw a path and apply the brush that I created. So I'll come up top here and apply the brush. And you guys get an idea for what happens. So the way it works is we actually have kind of a, a beginning. We have a, a middle we have an end, and if we have a, a square that we apply this brush to, it's got like an inside corner and an outside corner. Now, we need to create all those pieces. So what we do is we create what are called pattern swatches. So you take what you draw for the beginning, let's say, and you drag it in. I've already done it, but you drag it into your swatches. And if you come over here, drag it in there, you can see right there, what you want to do then is you want to double-click the swatch to name it. Now, you got to be careful because it's going to apply it to the stuff you had selected. So we'll call it like begin or something like that. I do it for all three objects here, and you guys can see I've already done it right here. I've got it right here. So I've got new pattern swatch, teeth, and, and I did not name the first one, so let me do that. So double click, I'll call this uh, begin. There we go. Now that we have the pieces for the brush, what we're going to do is we're going to come to the brushes panel, and you guys can see I already created one, but I'll make a new one here. So I want to make sure that nothing is selected, all right? So I'll come up here, click on new brush. You're going to see it says, okay, what kind of brush do you want to make? Now, the scatter brush and art brush, you have to have artwork selected to make one of those things. We're going to create a pattern brush. The reason why I said don't select artwork is because it can actually put it in the pattern immediately. I'll choose it or click OK. And here we go. We're going to say, OK, let's call this my zipper brush. Call it whatever you want. Down here, we have five different tiles to work with. We've got like the inside tile, which is basically the run. We've got the beginning tile right here. And if you hover over these, it's supposed to show you a tool tip. There we go. Start tile, end tile. You got the inner corner, the outer corner, and you've got the side tile, it's called. So what we wind up doing is we say, okay, for each part of the brush, I need to click on the tile. Come down here. We're going to say, okay, this is the teeth. The beginning is the begin part, the zipper pull. The end is the end. There we go. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Now, I, there's a lot of other things we can do, but I'll do it after I create it. So I'll click OK. It's created. You guys can see it right here. It's the bottom one. If I hover over it, you'll see zipper brush. I'll select my line that I created, apply the brush, and there we go. It's pretty much the same thing, you guys, just a little bit bigger. Now, when you guys apply brushes to objects, let's say to a path or to a square or, you know, a shape or whatever, the stroke affects the size of it. So if you come up to stroke and you make it smaller or bigger, it's going to affect the size of the uh, <laughs> the brush itself. That's wow, holy cow. So you, you do have some play here. You've got some some wiggle room, so to speak. Now, another couple of things we can do is we can come over to the brush, and since the object's selected, you can see it's highlighted. That's the one it is. I can double-click on Zipper Brush and change some things. And now that we've got it applied, we'll actually see some different things happen here. So I'll select Preview, and what we can do is we can change the scale. We can make it bigger or smaller. And you guys can see it happen out there. That's kind of cool. Now, if it's vector artwork you guys are using, which you are going to use typically, this is Find to Scale. And you can also do things like flip it. Flip it along. This flips it from end to end, basically. So you can see the end is now where the beginning was. Flip across just kind of puts it backwards almost. Flips it this way across the line. You can do things like add space to fit, approximate the path. These won't make much difference except in extreme cases where you guys are trying to fit enough zipper pull or pieces in here, the uh, actual teeth. The big thing I want to show you guys is what's called colorization. This is awesome. So if we take a look out here, we've got methods. We've got three different methods besides none. You got tints, tints and shades, hue shift. Now, if you choose tints, what it's going to do is it's going to let you guys go out and change the stroke color, and it will change basically all the colors within the objects here. So if I click OK, it's going to apply to strokes. That's fine. Apply to strokes means apply it to this that I've already applied it to. If I go to the stroke color and try something different, you can see what happens. So even like the zip right here, this is actually turning color. If I double-click on the brush again, come back in, and see methods here, tints and shades. This one's a little different. If you guys take a look, 
if something, let's say, is black, it's going to stay black. Or white, typically, it's going to become a color or something like that. So it's only going to colorize certain parts of it, which can be really cool. The one that I tend to like in certain cases is called Hue Shift. Now, what that one does is it literally says, okay, well, what color do you want to colorize? So you guys you can see right here that there's actually a little eyedropper. If I click on the eyedropper, typically there's a preview window you guys can go to. You guys can sample a color and say, let's do that one, let's do that one in the, in the preview. You can also come over here, and there's actually a little window right here which shows you what the color is right there. But anyway, typically this lets you go in and colorize. Now this is, you guys, this hue shift thing works really well for um, other kinds of brushes. Okay, not necessarily for a pattern brush. But anyway, I tend to use something like tints and shades or tints. I'll use tints. And there we go. Spacing is really cool too. You guys come, I kind of skipped this, but spacing allows you guys to go between one, or well, zero and a thousand. But if I do like 30%, you can space between the different pieces here, which is kind of cool. I'll click OK, apply it to the strokes, back out, and there we go. There's my zipper. So if I increase the stroke width, you guys can see that it's changing the size of that, and we're all good. Now I can also go in, you guys, to this, this brush here and change the options for just this one object, this ob object's options of selected object, I can say. There we go. And you can do some things to just that one uh, object you have, which is cool. So anyway, that's working with a brush, you guys. There's a lot of cool things we could do with these pattern brushes. And there's a lot of other stuff I could show you guys, but this is the main, um, the main features of working with a pattern brush in Illustrator.